continuing in a series on on things that that I wrote about and thought about a lot and play all night my book on the earliest era of the Almond Brothers band is is the fact that I tried very hard to center Barry Oakley in the story. I, I do think that Barry gets a very overlooked in his critical role and crucial role um, in the founding of the Almond Brothers in the sound that they had from the minute that they started really to the to the very end. The bass was essential to the sound. He played Barry played lead bass this is the way I described it in the book just like Jack Cassidy uh, and Phil Lesh in particular, um, those were, were two of his models. I think Jack Bruce probably there too, but the other two, those San Francisco bassists were, were very important. Jefferson Airplane, of course, and uh, The Grateful Dead. But Barry is, looms, looms extremely large in this story. A uh, small guy too. Um, he had like a size 24 waist. Uh, they have uh, some of his jeans at the big house. And I'm like, man, I haven't been a size 24 since I was in like sixth grade. But I digress. Um, because he played the shit out of the bass and had this, you know, just this big, huge sound that comes through on. The and of course, on At Fillmore East, uh, he is crystal clear. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite things to do when I listen to At Fillmore East or anything from that era live that I can hear and the different instruments real well is to follow Barry's bass uh, specifically highlighted in my head as I'm listening, focus on it, listen to how he's playing off each 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 person particularly the soloist or the, or the and, and then and then in the rhythm how they're pushing and pulling each other I, I could sit and talk with you guys for hours about it but that's not why I'm here today actually I, I'm going to share a quote from one of Barry's successors in the bass chair Otiel Burbridge who played in the Allman Brothers band from 1997 all the way to 2014 he'd still be playing with them I think had they not uh, gotten off the road and then he immediately got a gig in the Grateful Dead or with the Dead and plays in Dead and Company continues to um, just a phenomenal musician, human, um, and uh, spirit. And here's what he said about Barry Oakley. And, and if I'm correct in remembering this, this is probably from 1997 or 1998 and hitting the Note magazine. I think this is where I got this quote. And he's talking about Barry Oakley. He says, "Stand back, don't keep me wondering, black-hearted woman." That's some driving Oakley shit right there. He's a funky, funky bass player. The thing about Barry is if you listen to it on the surface, you can perceive that he's just playing around with the groove, but it's very orchestrated. He has clearly defined bass lines that are counterpoint to the other melodies or chord comps that are going on. There are many layers to it. Oteil Burbridge, talking about the great Oak, Barry Oakley. Long live the Almond Brothers Band. <laughs>